Do you not know which settings to use to get the best quality from your Logitech C270 webcam? I've been using this thing for over a year to make video live stream, and in this video I'm going to review the webcam and show you all of the OBS settings, explain a little bit about what they mean, settings that I use to get the best quality that I know how to get out of this thing. Welcome to Peculiar Pine Tree. On this channel I help you make video live stream or do gaming on an ultra small budget, and this is actually just a picture. You want to make videos and live stream, you need a webcam, but you're on an ultra small budget. Do you actually want to spend a hundred dollars for a good webcam? Or do you want to make your money count as much as possible, spend a fraction of a hundred dollars to get a perfectly adequate webcam that does everything you need it to do and have money left over to buy other things? You've already tried using your cell phone camera, but you've run into one of those situations where it just doesn't do the job the way you want it to. If that's your situation, here's a webcam that I use to do the job at a very small budget price. And this is actually just a picture. The real webcam is actually what we're using to record this right now. Now just before we get into the review, um, just before starting this, I actually changed my lighting setup, so if you notice any odd things on the green screen, um, part of that, it threw off the whole green screen, so I had to recalibrate it when I changed my lighting setup. But anyways, let's get into reviewing the webcam and then the best settings. Review. The two important questions, one, what are some features of this webcam? And two, what is it compatible with? That kind of stuff. So simpler question first, it is compatible, it says, on this box that you can't see because it's been green screened out. It's compatible with Windows and Mac. Um, I use it on Windows, Windows 10 actually, and it works really, really nicely. Now, I've never actually used it on Mac because Mac has its own webcam, so why would you need an extra one? But if you do want an extra one, you can see right now that it does in fact work on Mac. But I've been using it on Windows 10 with OBS for about a year. It works on other Windows versions as well, um, but I've never tested them, so you guys will have to let me know on that. Some basic stuff, it runs on USB and it's 720p 30fps is what it's rated for and I'll show you what we can actually get out of it in OBS. There's different settings for it. But first some things about the actual webcam itself. It has a field of view of 60 degrees although that varies depending on the settings that you have and it has what's called a fixed focus which some people don't like that. I actually prefer it, I think, so far. What is fixed focus? Well, autofocus is where basically it focuses on things closer to the camera uh, or farther away or whatever. The things behind you will be out of focus a little bit with an autofocus. And so if you start backing away, it'll have to refocus the image, all that kind of stuff. Um, I actually prefer fixed focus, which is what this camera is. And the reason for that is because basically with a fixed focus, it seems to have a way of keeping everything in focus, which is really nice because there's a background here, right? This tree, now the lighting, I could probably do the lighting better, brighten this, but that's about two feet behind me. And it's perfectly in focus, which is really nice. So it's kind of a personal preference thing, but I don't actually see fixed focus as a drawback. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do with it. I see fixed focus actually as a benefit in this case because you can see the things back here better. You can actually see in this graphics card fan blades. If uh, if you're watching on mobile, you might not be able to see that, but if you're watching on um, a larger screen, you might be able to see that because it's all pretty much in focus. But of course, no camera is any good unless you can prop it up on something. Now, most cameras work with a screw system of some sort where you can take the camera, even webcams, some of them, and screw it onto a camera stand of some sort, and that's how most of them work. This has a different system, which actually may work better for you, especially if you don't have a camera stand that you can screw things into. This actually has a mount that's designed to go on top of a monitor and just sort of rest on the top. And that can actually be very nice if you want something versatile. So for example, what I've got here is I've got, this actually is a camera stand with the screw thing in it, but it wasn't tall enough. I wanted it to be taller, so you extend it up higher and then you can just hook the webcam over the top of it very easily. It's very nice and very easy to remove as well if you want to. Also, if you want to buy this webcam for yourself, there's a link in the description. It also has a built-in mic, but I don't know how good the built-in mic is. Um, just don't use built-in mics. 
unless you have no other choice. But um, just like disable it, and I'll show you how to disable the built-in mic. But uh, yeah, if you're trying to live stream or record videos or whatever, use use like a stand mic or a headset or something that's actually like designed as a mic, not just something that's thrown into a camera or a laptop or whatever. Built-in mics just generally aren't a good idea because they never sound good anyway. So moving on. Best settings. Oh yeah, I'm going to use that voice. So I'm going to take you through all of the OBS settings, explain a little bit about what they mean, and point out a few that are of special note when we get to them. But for the icing on the cake... So obviously the webcam's already set up. Let's go into here. This would be the webcam entry down here, webcam green screen. So click on that, right click, go down to properties. And here you go. Basically how you add that is you just go here and add a video capture device. And then you can go ahead and add existing because I have it already, or you can add a new one, add the webcam in, good to go. So in the properties window is where you set up the webcam. So basically we have here device, USB video device, yep. Now, configure video is the first thing on the list. This, you click on that, and it brings you to here a properties like thing that you can adjust. Now this, it's been a long time, as I said, I've had this for over a year. It's been a long time since I set this up, but I believe this is the driver that I'm playing with right now. Now, I actually, you may notice that yours looks different than this. I actually went and changed from the default driver to a different driver called the native UVC driver. If you want to know how to change drivers, there's a link in the description to the Logitech website. I thought that it made the camera more stable and less flickery, but I think actually I also changed lighting at the same time, brightened it a lot, and that seems to have had a bigger f effect, so I'm not sure changing the driver actually helped anything. But uh, yeah, if you want to know how to do that, link in the description. But basically, this is the driver page for the webcam. Some very basic settings, you can go in here and adjust brightness, contrast, saturation. If you don't know what a driver is, let me know in the comments and I will try to explain it. But basically, here's all the settings, but I would do more to change it not in the driver page, but actually in the OBS filter page, although that may be a personal preference. The things of note here are especially the auto section. If you're doing green screen like I'm doing, one thing that's really important is you don't want your camera to be readjusting all the time to different lighting, different things like that. Um, so I turned off auto on everything. Now the only difference was, I'm just going to move this over so we can see, white balance. And the reason for that is for some reason, whenever I turn that off, it goes very, very red. I don't know why it goes red. It doesn't make any sense. And I couldn't seem to fix it no matter where you move it to. It just goes more orange or less orange. It just always seemed to be red, and I don't understand why. So turn auto on, and it's back to normal. It's like it, it goes from like anywhere on the red spectrum is where it seems to go. I don't get that. If you guys know why that is, let me know, because this is super annoying when you're dealing with green screen. It's really nice to not have all these other things on auto, but having the white balance on auto gives you challenges because it keeps adjusting your color slightly, just enough to throw the green screen off, not enough to really notice it aside from that. Power line frequency, anti-flicker. This is on 60 hertz. That's because I live in North America. If you're in Europe, I think you have a 50 hertz power grid, so you might want to change that. Camera control over here. Exposure is also on auto. That's weird. I don't know why that's on auto, but that's good to know. I'll have to play with that later. Low light compensation. I have that on. I didn't even remember that was a setting, so I don't know what difference that would make. But if you have issues, you might want to change this and see. Enough of the properties window. Now we have the next settings. Configure crossbar. Obviously deactivate. You don't want to do that because you want your <laughs> camera active. That's the thing. Configure crossbar. I don't know. I click on that. Nothing happens. Although it seems to have just opened the properties window again. I'm confused. So if you guys know what that is, let me know. But let's move on to the settings that I actually know what they do, which is most of them. Deactivate when not showing. That's basically if you have multiple scenes in OBS, it will deactivate it when you're on a scene that doesn't require it. Resolution FPS type. Now the resolution FPS type 
is where we get into some interesting things. You can see that it's set on device default right now. If I change this to custom, we have some different settings that we can do. If you don't know what resolution is, that's basically of this whole image, how many pixels across and how many pixels down. Pixels are basically the dots that make up the image. Here's the resolution drop down menu and you can see it's got a lot of resolution options, everything from 1280 by 960 so it's rated as a 720 webcam but actually this thing says it supports higher resolutions than that 1280 by 960 you can see if we switch it to 1280 by 720 then it does nothing what did it not do anything ah obs was glitched apparently a restart fixed it so I've created a new scene here so you can see the effects of changing the webcam resolution. So you can't actually see the panel, but I'll tell you what it is. So there's actually more visibility that you can see top and bottom of the screen that is because this is 1280 by 960. If we set this to be the full size of the screen, then you can compare them better. So we'll put it on the left there. So this would be 1280 by 960. You can see if we change it 1280 to 720, then logically it goes and shrinks a bit. So how it changes just basically is by cropping the image. Now if we keep going down, 1184 by 656 is smaller. Now the reason you may want a smaller resolution, let's go for 640 by 360 is that if your webcam is lagging, it may run better with a smaller resolution. I've never had a problem with this thing lagging that I remember. But if you have a really slow computer, it's always possible. But depending on where it actually processes the resolution change, it may help. But let's set it back to 1280 by 960 because we get the most visibility that way. And then there's auto, which for some reason is smaller. I prefer to leave it on auto though, but as you can see, it actually cuts off if you look down here, like that speaker, if I can hold it with the perspective, there we go, that speaker that I'm grabbing right there, if you watch that closely and we change it from auto to 1280 by 960, let's just shrink this down, you can see actually that you see farther, you have more image. So if you guys are finding that it's got very narrow vision, try changing it from auto to 1280 by 960 or one of those other settings. But moving on, let's take it back off of device default. The FPS match output FPS auto select 30 is what it's on right now. FPS means how many frames or how many pictures per second the camera is producing. And so the more frames per second, the more pictures per second, the smoother your camera will be. You can see it's auto selecting 30. Now I'm actually recording this in 60 frames per second, but the webcam doesn't go higher than 30, so 30 is half of 60, so that works out nicely with the math there. Um, you can set it on highest FPS, you can set it manually on 30 or 29.97 or 25, any of these numbers here, and you can see what I mean if we switch it to 5, then you can see that it's very, very choppy and slow because only five frames per second. But let's go back to match output FPS. And then we have within resolution and FPS type this setting video format, any or MJPEG, which changes the format of the video. But let's set this back to device default. That's what I like to leave it on. And now let us move on. So color space, I have that on default. You have 709 and 601 for color space, color range, you have partial and full. Basically these two settings have to do with how many colors it's able to produce. So I just have them on default. Buffering. Buffering, if you find that your face cam, your webcam is delayed a little bit, check buffering. I have it on auto detect. I find that works fine for me. Basically what buffering does is if it's enabled to prevent your webcam from like stuttering too much or something, it will buffer if you're having trouble with your webcam stuttering or something, then buffering may help to smooth that out. But the way it does that is basically by creating a bit of a delay to have more data to work with, which means that you have a bit of a delay. So disabled means that you don't have a bit of a delay. Um, I just have it on auto detect and it seems to work fine for me. I haven't noticed any delay or issues either way. Flip vertically, pretty self-explanatory. Audio output mode. This brings us to disable built-in mic. You can see audio output mode here 
is this is not actually where you disable the built-in mic. Capture audio only, that's what I have it on. You don't need to worry about use custom audio device. What you want to do if you want to disable the built-in mic is simply this. If you're on Windows 10, open your start menu, search for control panel, and here you simply want to go into hardware and sound, click on sound, it opens your sound control panel. Now, what you want to do here, just go into recording, go down to, you can see there's the name of the item and there's the actual hardware like description of it kind of thing. So go down to where you see HD webcam C270, which is this one. It happens to be called microphone, <laughs> very helpful name for identifying which one it is, microphone, but HD webcam C270, right click on that, and mine says enable because I already have it disabled, but that's all you need to do, just go in here, click disable. I believe that's how I did it. If that doesn't work for you, like there's no disable option or something, then let me know in the comments. I did this quite a while ago, so if it doesn't work, let me know and I will try to help you out if I can. But that's all there is to disabling the mic. Now, as you can tell in the microphone list, if you can read that webcam green screen, it's actually still there as a microphone. But if I turn this on, you can tell there's no sound coming through the webcam microphone because it has been disabled, which is very nice. So just as an added measure, because I don't want extra sound coming through by accident, if ever there's a glitch or something, I just turned the volume down and then muted it on top of that just to be on the safe side. But as you can see, disabling the mic actually worked. It wasn't actually playing anything anyways. But for the icing on the cake, just to make it look really good, right click on the webcam, go down to filters. And what you have here, are a lot of options in OBS for filters, and what I did here is just pay attention to this one down here. Um, the other ones are for green screening and stuff, different experiments I did. But color correction, you can see if we turn this off, this is what the webcam looks like right now, the actual webcam. If we turn on the color correction, it looks better. All this really does is changes the hue shift here. So basically all you need to do, go here, add a color correction option, grab the hue shift meter and adjust it until it looks closer to what it should be, or it looks good to your tastes depending on what you want to do with it. Which brings us to the whole question of lighting. Lighting is half the battle with any camera and definitely with a budget webcam. If you want to know more about how I light the room for this thing, then let me know. I may be able to do another video about that. If you're wondering about why my hand goes green when I move it, I have two theories about that. One is that maybe I don't have enough lighting. Two is that possibly it's the quality of the camera, something to do with it compressing the video. But it definitely does better with more light. And you can also see that it's when I move my hand that it has more issues. Um, there is not really a lot of light in here. So I'm guessing that's the issue. You notice without the green screen, my hand is a bit blurry when I'm moving it. There's a lot less lighting than I would like in this room, so that would probably fix a lot of the blur. But hopefully you found this review of the webcam and the settings helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, or if you like this webcam and you want to buy it for yourself, there's a link in the description. If you want to see this webcam in action, I live stream on Twitch every Friday at roughly 4.15 p.m. Eastern time. Been using this webcam for the past year in those streams and improving the lighting and the settings over time. Links in the description, check that out if you want to see it in action, and see you all in the next video.